the Ebola virus disease outbreak has ended, but efforts to address the root causes of health problems, including healthcare, is gaining momentum. And this is being done by people and institutions within and outside Sierra Leone. The most recent action comes from Medico International, an aid and human rights organization with its headquarters in Frankfurt, Germany. Following the epidemic, Medical International is in the country to visit and respond to the needs of their long-term partner organizations, including the Network Movement for Justice and Development. Well, with me in the studios, I have Anna Jung, who is the Outreach Officer at Medical International, and Andreas Wolf. Andreas Wolf, who is a medical doctor. Anna, hello, welcome to the program. Hello. Anna Wolf. Now, um, Let's start off with a brief overview of Medical International. Mm -hmm. So Medical is a development aid and human rights organization based in Germany. And since almost 50 years, we work very closely with a local partner organization in three continents. And so the African continent is one of them. And almost 10 years back, we started to work with partner organizations based here in Sierra Leone. For, for close to a decade now, you've been working with partners in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. so, so what has been your contribution so far? So going back to the past, we met the Network Movement for Justice and Development, not on behalf of development work, but within a common campaign that was called the Campaign for Just Mining. So we first met on international conferences already during the war, but mainly after the end of the war. And we fought from different perspective for just mining. Uh, we saw as a German NGO, we saw it as our responsibility to struggle for um, better working conditions in the mines. As the, uh, as the companies who are doing business, for example, in Kono District, were mainly coming from European countries. And so this was something that brought us together. And in the coming years, we started some more projects. Uh, so uh, Network Movement for Justice and Development, they came up with a program for paralegals. Um, assisting people for, uh, with legal advice, you know, those people who were forcefully removed from their houses due to the blasting in Kono. And this is one of our programs. Okay. Uh, um, Andreas, uh, why are you in Sierra Leone? Oh, I'm uh, accompanying Anna because we work very closely during the Ebola epidemic together, me offering also health expertise, being also involved with global health policy issues in medical. Um, so Ebola was in the, throughout the whole last year, one and a half years, a major point of debate, uh, both in Germany and the question on how the German uh, public and government are responding to the Ebola, uh, the Ebola crisis, but also on the global level how health policies are shaped, what role the World Health Organization is playing, um, the debates also around the need to assist countries in such crises, how this could be shaped, and also how this should continue into and support for building up a health system that can better respond and that better also is, is answering to the needs, the health needs of the people in the affected countries. Okay, Anna, you are here to make a donation. T mm. Tell us about this donation. So we, we came here to see what our partners, mainly in Kenema, um, did in the field of sensitizing people to the Ebola epidemic. So what happened in Germany as a sign of international solidarity, so to say, is that we got a lot of private donations to give it to local partner organizations who were involved in fighting back this dangerous um, virus. And so our partners were mainly uh, part of the sensitizing teams 
working very close with the community uh, to help them, you know, in changing behavior, but also to explain why this is necessary, because there was, uh, in my perspective, sometimes a lack of communication. There were very strict rules and they were very necessary, but on the other hand, there was um, people don't understand why they should behave in a different way, and our partners, they try to fill that gap. Mm -hmm. You're just coming from Kinema. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what were the issues or the problems that you identified? Yeah. What we can see is that the communities are still suffering from the Ebola epidemic. And it's not only the survivors uh, having big problems like, you know, uh, they have um, problems with their eyes, their body is aching, they feel very weak, and they've gone through a very traumatizing experience. But it's also the whole community who lived in fear for their loved ones and also you know, not knowing what the future might bring. And so they're still suffering from the situation. And also they, um, they are facing very difficult economic situation because most of these people in Kenema work as farmers. Mm -hmm. So they don't know how to make their living now because they lost their harvest. And yeah, this is what we can see there. Uh, Andreas, um, with the health problems um, being highlighted by Anna here, what, what, how would you respond to such issues? Uh, what I think what, what you have to see is yes, that, that, of course, all of the communities have, were affected also in grieving and are still in a state, or some of them are really, when they lost loved ones, they, a mother, we met a mother who lost her child, who was self recovering from Ebola, but her child died. So this, this needs a very intense intervention in terms also of psychosocial support. Mm. And as Anna said, we think and we understood from our partners and in speaking with these people that support should not be exclusively given to the, um, the survivors. The survivors need definitely specialized treatment something that only had to be developed because not so much is known about Ebola survivors yeah. until now. So many of these problems have been discovered for the first time now that Ebola is over. So there's a lot of, there's some research what we understood. There's, there, I think the need is also to have specialized clinics. But also importantly is that, that the whole community is supported because mm -hmm. these Ebola survivors are weak. They cannot work so much in the fields. That means also agricultural productivity will be less. So to integrate them, and they also, communities need to be assured that Ebola survivors are not a threat any longer. They face sometimes stigmatization. People are still in fear that they mm -hmm. are not sure are they really are they really not infectious any longer? What might happen? There is a lot of discussion. Mm -hmm. Is, is the, uh, the, the virus surviving in the semen? Is this a problem? When can I start again building families? Mm -hmm. So all these problems need to be addressed <coughs> on a community level and mm -hmm. needs, needs support for all of them. Okay, uh, um, that brings me to your trip to McKinney. Um, what were you able to, to gather so far with regards to the operations of your partners there? Have they dumped the EVD, the Ebola virus disease, and move on with their normal lives? Or are they still working on mm. the issue of Ebola? Mm. So everything is not back to normal, mm. not at all. Uh, what we could feel is that they were still in the mood of celebrating the end of the epidemic. Mm. Like all of you, uh, unfortunately, we only came after the uh, November 7th, <laughs> so we missed the big party. Mm -hmm. And so in this feeling uh, of relief, this is mixed with also a feeling mm -hmm. of fear, what the future might bring. And as I said, all, uh, the Ebola um, came along um, with an impact also on 
uh, the economic situation and also I think the recovery of the economic life will take a while. And you know, coming from Germany, I have to say that looking back, we are not happy with every measure that has been taken by European government. Mm. For example, that um, British Airways stopped flying to Freetown. Mm. We think that was an overreaction to protect people down in Europe, but it caused a lot of damage for your country. Mm. And so we hope that uh, these um, German government and also the governments from other European country will not forget about what they promised during the epidemic, mm. uh, what they are willing to, um, to fund with regard to the recovery of the country. Okay. Uh, um, Andreas, uh, Andreas, I'm tempted to ask you this question. Yeah. Uh, as a medical doctor, what's your general observation with regards to trauma or other related health hazards? in Sierra Leone at the moment? So what, what we could, I think we were not visiting many hospitals, okay. I think, or health I mean, facilities. With, with the people so or the places you visited? Yeah. 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 On the communities that we have seen. Yeah. Um, as I said, definitely psycho, the, the need for psychosocial support comes from mm. the really trauma, traumatizing experience of being in a helpless state. Uh, I think a very traumatizing experience must have been to see your loved ones ill, sick, very sick, and you were not allowed to touch them. Mm -hmm. You were not allowed to do the very human thing, helping them, because helping them would mean not only him would die or her, but the whole group and mm -hmm. your family. So this, this is a traumatizing moment. This is something mm -hmm. <clears throat> Maybe we also need to that people will reflect on this later on. What we felt, we, this was also in traumatizing, was also to feel so enclosed again. So there is an invisible enemy outside. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, I can't send my kids to school. I'm, I'm, I am afraid leaving my house. Um, there, there might be a uh, uh, quarantine area around so there are soldiers with guns mm. sometimes not behaving they threatening me to go out so this is this is all what what i think needs time to discuss needs to and even if you understand these measures they will still traumatize you and some people refer to us also to saying this is a re-traumatizing from fear we had during the civil war mm. so yeah. this is this is something that I think it's on a society level, not just the individual who might have um, uh, bad night dreams, who have nightmares, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. feel depressed and feel difficult to start again with its life. Mm -hmm. um, this, these, are, these are the situations, like a mother who doesn't know, can I breastfeed my kid? Because in the breast milk there might be also the virus, mm -hmm. even if I'm a survivor. These are traumatizing moments uh, what I feel a lot of attention needs to be given to. We met a very active medical district officer in Kenema, for example, who had a big plan for a really extensive plan for an extensive support program uh, in, his ta in his district, which I think deserves very much support. Okay. Anna, do you subscribe to the view of Andreas? Yes, yes, of course. And just to add on that, you know, um, lots of people already started to talk about a recovery plan and what they think, what is needed to be done now. And this is something I would also like to focus on because what I like is that um, coming along with um, the Ebola uh, epidemic, all of a sudden, everybody talked about the weak health system in West Africa and that there is a need for a, a very fundamental change. Mm. So I think this opened a window really to make an impact now and to contribute in the reconstructing of the health system. And what we heard, for example, is that um, there are people who, who think of how to increase, for example, the income of the state 
due to, for example, due to uh, tax, uh, taxing the mining companies in a different way like before to get more money that can be invested in the field of health and not to forget that also in the field of education mm -hmm. what goes hand in hand. Okay. Uh, um, Anna, you are very much interested in fair trade and fair mining mm -hmm. issues. So how does this um, area of your activity connected to um, <coughs> our healthcare system? Yeah. You know, I, we see this connection since a very long time. And uh, when I came here the last time, that was four years back, mm -hmm. I met the program manager of um, NMJD in Makeni. And I asked him about the health system four years back. Mm -hmm. And what he said, let's hope for everybody who lives here that nothing serious is ever going to happen because then it will be a big problem. And so we saw, unfortunately, uh, we saw the result, yeah, what happened after the uh, Ebola epidemic came to Sierra Leone. So I think also um, with a look to neighboring African countries, that it would be a good, idea to combine the issue of health also with the companies who work in these African countries. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a need to, yeah, maybe to force them mm -hmm. to reinvest some of the money they get out of the country into the health system, into a, a, a proper schools and what is needed. In a country like Botswana, for example, there is a difference because the contract is saying that there is a need to for, uh, for a reinvestment mm -hmm. in this country. And people are better off there. And they also have lots of diamonds, but some of the um, profit of the diamond trade is coming back to Botswana. Mm -hmm. And I think this might be a, co a small contribution also on behalf of the, uh, of the um, international industry to help um, a, a country like Sierra Leone to get back to normal. And it's also, of course, it's also the responsibility mm. of European governments mm. to control the companies, you know, from European countries mm. to do no harm and to take care of human rights, of pollution and everything that goes along with, uh, for example, with the mining activities. Okay. Well, um, is Anna, um, we have Anna and Andreas Wolf. Anna Jung is the outreach officer Medical International and Andreas Wolf is the medical doctor. Now, um, Andreas, like you've highlighted, there are so many complications at the moment with regards to the, the communities you've visited and how people are responding to coming out of the Ebola outbreak at the moment. Um, are, are you seeing the government responding swiftly to what's the psychosocial needs of these people? I, I think we have been here a very short time, okay. so mm -hmm. this is, uh, yeah, yeah, I would yeah, say, to observe not, enough, not enough to really have a comprehensive answer okay. to this question. Uh, what, what I told you, that we have seen very active district mm -hmm. medical officer, we have seen uh, people who are very much, um, were very active in the district Ebola response center, in McKenney, for mm -hmm. example. So mm -hmm. there we have seen very committed people from government mm -hmm. or who are part yeah. of the whole government structure. Okay. Um, we heard a lot of people speaking about the Ebola recovery plan, mm -hmm. the post-recovery yeah. plan, and um, that they are waiting. I think it is not published yet, what we understood. So, but that this might be the, 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 the blueprint for working on swiftly rebuilding the health system. And one point, many of our par partners or we talked with told us what is like, is, it is very good to have such a big plan and to have a comprehensive response. What is also very important is to monitor 
how this is going to be implemented. Let, so let, let me help you out with okay. the post-Ebola um, mm -hmm. recovery yeah. drive. We said that the President, Dr. Anes Baikroma, launched the, his uh, recovery priorities mm -hmm. yeah. that focuses on four thematic areas. Yeah. Um, health, privatization, education, and the social aspect. Yeah. He's saying th um, those are his four priority areas yeah. that he wants to work on and see how best he can, th those areas can help in revamping the country's economy. Yeah. I, I would be a bit skeptical about what privatization in this, uh, mm. in this area can contribute because we are... He, he's asking the private uh, sector to oh. take um, the, the, the four in terms okay. of helping to revamp mm. the country's economy. Uh, okay, okay, this kind of, so not privatizing the healthcare system. Not at all. Okay, okay, okay. then because we see this in other countries, is a talk of the day a lot, mm. and so we are very skeptical and critical towards this. Okay, Anna, um, the EVD outbreak is considered or hoped by many civil unions as a thing of the past. But I understand um, you believe there is another virus that <laughs> needs <laughs> to be mm. eradicated. What is yeah. this virus called? I think we can call it poverty mm. because what we see is that there is a very direct link between health issues on the one hand side and poverty on the other hand side. Mm. So fighting back poverty should go hand in hand with the recovery or the uh, stabilization of the health sector mm. and I think there are already the first steps that have been made and you know we see it as our role when we come back mm -hmm. to Germany tomorrow mm -hmm. night we're going back okay. that we report back also to our own government mm -hmm. what we heard what people told us about their need what should be done now and uh, also to remind our own government on their promises they made during the epidemic to support as a kind of international solidarity uh, those countries who suffered from the epidemic to create a better future. Um, this particular issue is um, very crucial, especially at a time like this when the government is trying to recover from the damages being caused by the Ebola outbreak. Andreas, do you subscribe to um, Anna's view of calling poverty a virus? Sure, definitely. I think the German history, mm. we have the, let's say, one of the forefathers of the public health movement was a German doctor called Rudolf Virchow in the 19th century. And mm. he was actually learning on very much in, on the ground in a very poor area mm. of Prussia mm. at that time before Germany was united to one country that uh, an epidemic of typhoid, which mm. you still exist today, mm -hmm. was very much linked to the extremely poor living conditions mm. of this rural area. And so he came back <coughs> in the middle of the 19th century and saying you have to combat poverty and illiteracy as the central, these are, these are the ways how you combat this deadly disease. You are mm -hmm. not, it is not a question of this bacteria or this virus only. It is very much the condition, the, the living conditions that, that are at the basis of health or, or, or illness. So this is, this is something, uh, it is very much, and sometimes it gets forgotten in the mm. medical trade because you are so much focusing on, on these material stuff like, like viruses, mm -hmm. but in reality mm -hmm. what keeps people healthy is uh, the, the means to, to, to lead a, a healthy life is eradicating poverty. Okay. Um, Anna, let's look at the, the hazards of poverty. Mm -hmm. How would you um, describe the hazards of poverty? Sorry, Anna. How would you describe the dangers of poverty in a society, especially like Sierra Leone? This is a very complicated question you are asking me mm. um, at the end of this interview. I think um, you feel it in daily life mm. that people have no access to health care, mainly in the rural area. Mm. Um, when they are poor, it's uh, for them very difficult to get access to health. This uh, causes serious health damages. And beyond that, when we take a look of the so-called social determinants of mm. health, also including poor housing conditions, 
this also is a very high risk for getting sick when you don't have access to clean water, when you can't send your children to school. Um, this all um, is a risk of forgetting sick and so the, the general idea of Medico International, the organization we work for, is mm -hmm. to understand health in a broader perspective and to see how close it is to relate it also to this issue Andreas mentioned. And so what we say is that health, uh, the right to health should include more than the access to medicine. Mm. It also includes um, the, uh, the right to have a life in dignity and to have access also to um, social conditions with make it possible to live also in social justice. So, so how can this virus be eradicated? This virus of poverty? Mm. How can it be eradicated? It has, to me, it has a lot to do with the general idea of redistribution. Mm. What we can see, and this is not only an issue of Sierra Leone, it's a global issue, mm that there is a very unjust situation with regard to distribution of, of uh, wealth. And uh, I think this should be a starting point. So um, what do we do on behalf of Medico International? We came up with the idea of a kind of a, of a health fund making sure that there is a redistribution of wealth in a global perspective uh, to, um, to um, because we see, you know, the, that the health um, situation can't be changed only when you look on one country. It's always a global issue and I think the, vi the Ebola epidemic was a symbol for that, that mm. health is always a global issue. And so I think what is needed to start with a global redistribution of wealth and uh, fair trade is only one pillar in that. There mm. are many more, but this is really a very broad issue <laughs> we bring up now. So, uh, Andreas, uh, what's your view on that? Yeah, I, I would add, uh, next to redistribution, what we say is important is regulation mm -hmm. as a second pillar, which, which adds mm -hmm. to all the questions of exactly. how much profits can be amassed by private entities without being responsible for mm -hmm. what they are doing. So these regulation issues, uh, like for the mining industry, is very important, and rights. So to understand and accept that every person has a right uh, to, to basic living conditions, to good health care, to education, which is already enshrined in some UN covenants, but have not been realized and, and the, the taken up as a responsible for a global world. Mm -hmm. Usually these kind of social rights are left with local governments, with each government <coughs> to, to deal with. And so poor co countries uh, have a problem in having enough resources. We see it very strongly now in this globalized economical world. Mm. There's also a need, a right for a global right to health, meaning that, that uh, access to healthcare services, access to clean water, good housing is something every citizen of the world uh, is deserving. Mm. And we should find ways also on global level to really do find the resources, which are there. I think th there's so much wealth amassed mm -hmm. in the modern world. So there's no, ne no reason for people to be that poor. So this is, this is the big challenge. Okay. Uh, uh, um, Anna, before we go, um, what would you consider the reformatory way forward, taking into consideration um, Medical International um, forms an integral part in the world's um, health system? With, um, what would you think that Sierra Leone as a country should do to boost its health sector? Okay. No, I don't want to 
overestimate our own role as a German mm. pretty small non-government organization. Mm. So we can contribute some thoughts that we have and I think we shared some ideas now. Um, and um, I, I also see it's not my position to give advice to the Sierra Leonean government. Mm. I can only report back to you what our partners told us mm -hmm. and this is, uh, this is how we identify our role and uh, most of them underlined the necessity also of a better monitoring structure uh, in general uh, also to fight back problems that you are still facing like corruption in this country and this is what they refer to, that it's clear that everything that is coming inside the country is, con is um, fairly contributed to also to the rural area and that is nothing, there's no lack, you know, in between. Mm. This is what most, yeah, most of the people we talked to told us and um, beyond that, they see it um, in a long scale, you know, that everybody knows that these problems can't be solved within the next couple of months. But what, what our partners and also many people I interview said is that the Sierra Leonean government should um, um, what, you know, what make, make clear that they, when they do the first step, that the next steps are also mm. coming. And some of them refer to this great free health care act that you have here mm. for under five, children under five and mothers. mothers yeah. And they, they, uh, they think maybe this free health care act can be a kind of role model mm. for a, a free health care act for everybody, not mm. only for pregnant women and children. And, and many of them are calling yeah. for the free health care initiative to be factored into the Give Youth Constitution. Yeah, exactly. This mm. is also something, a debate that's going on right now to integrate the right to health into the, con the constitution of Sierra Leone. And as we can see from the examples uh, of other European and also other African countries, that m this might help a lot. Um, the right to health is part of the constitution in South Africa. And so this allows people who feel that their right to health is um, violated mm -hmm. also to take their own government to court mm -hmm. and to fight for their right mm -hmm. and access to health. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for mm -hmm. being part of the program. Thank you for having us. Anna mm -hmm. Young is the Outreach mm -hmm. Officer, Medical International, and Dr. Andreas Wolf. Thank you very much for joining us thank in the program. You. Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. we go for a short break and we'll be right back.